Hi, and welcome to Stats with Mia. In this video, we will discuss the concepts of sensitivity and specificity, which are two important measures for evaluating binary classification tests. So these are tests that have two outcomes, and the most prominent example is a medical diagnostic test. So for example, a pregnancy test will tell you whether you are pregnant or not. A COVID-19 test will tell you whether you're infected or not. Alarms and detectors are also a good example. At the airport, the full body scan will go off if you're carrying a dangerous item, and hopefully it stays quiet if you're not carrying anything dangerous. So these two examples, um, they actually have some physical machinery going on, but you can also apply this concept to binary classification algorithms. So for example, uh, Netflix might have an algorithm to decide whether to recommend a new movie to you or not, given the data that already exists about your preferences. In all of these tests, there's some potential for making errors, for making some kind of misclassification. So for example, the detector might go off even if you're not carrying anything dangerous, and the Netflix algorithm might recommend you something that you don't actually like. So in these binary classification tests, there are four scenarios for what could happen. And we're going to illustrate this using the example of the metal detector at the airport. And Mr. Pickles is going to go through it. In scenario one, let's say that Mr. Pickles is carrying a weapon on him. So he's carrying um, a pair of scissors because he uh, was about to get a haircut. Okay. And the alarm goes off. So he's got a weapon and the detector correctly identifies it. So scenario one lies in this box here. It is a true positive. Let's say that we are in scenario two now. In scenario two, he's carrying a weapon, but the alarm doesn't go off. So in this case, we call this a false negative. Mr. Pickles is carrying a weapon, but the alarm wrongly tells everyone that he is not. So there is an error here. Now in scenario three, we're going to say that Mr. Pickles is wearing some bling here. So he's got a metallic necklace and the alarm does go off. There isn't really a cause for a concern. So we would call this a false positive. The alarm goes off, but he's not really carrying a dangerous weapon, and there is an error here. In scenario four, he just comes as he is. He's not carrying anything metallic, and the alarm doesn't go off. This is what we call a true negative. So these are the four possible options that could happen. In this case, we detect things correctly, and in this case, we detect things correctly. However, we make errors in these two places. So we're now ready to define sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is the proportion of times Mr. Pickles goes through with the dangerous item and the alarm correctly goes off. In these two boxes, Mr. Pickles has a dangerous item and on the left, the alarm correctly identifies it. So we can say that sensitivity is the number of true positives divided by the sum of true positives and false negatives. Now, what about specificity? Well, specificity is the number of times Mr. Pickles goes in without any dangerous items and the alarm is correctly silent. So in these two blue boxes, Mr. Pickles doesn't have any dangerous items and on the right, the alarm is correctly silent. So we can say that the specificity is the number of true negatives divided by the sum of the two blue boxes. So the false positives plus the true negatives. So sensitivity and specificity are important ways to evaluate the test. In the ideal scenario, you want to have high sensitivity and high specificity, but there's often a trade-off. If you want high sensitivity for your airport detector, 
so that you don't let through any dangerous items, you may find that the alarm goes off for benign metallic items. So the sensitivity will be high, but the specificity will not be quite as high. Let's go through an example where we actually do the calculations. Let's say that you're interested in the COVID-19 throat swab test, and you conduct this test on 200 people. And let's say that with a longer follow-up of the patients and using more sophisticated testing, you can actually determine whether the throat swab test correctly diagnosed the patients. So you end up with these results. For true positives, you've got 70 patients, you've got 30 false negatives, 5 false positives, and 95 true negatives. So what's the sensitivity and specificity of this test? Well, for sensitivity, we've got 70 true positives divided by uh, 70 plus 30 false negatives. So that gives you a sensitivity of 0.7 or 70%. And what about specificity? Well, we've got 95 true negatives divided by uh, 5 false positives plus 95 true negatives. So that gives you a sensitivity of 0.95 or 95%. So this test has a high specificity, but its sensitivity is relatively moderate. And that's because you have um, quite a high number of false negatives here. This means that if you get a positive test result, you can be fairly confident that it's correct. However, if you get a negative test result, you may want to be a little bit more cautious in interpreting that result. This problem is discussed further in this paper in the British Medical Journal, and they state that recent estimates of the sensitivity and specificity of the throat swab test vary a lot, but the lower end of the estimates are around 70% and 95% respectively. And in conjunction with knowing the prevalence of COVID-19 in a particular area, they discuss issues around interpreting the result of the COVID-19 test. It involves Bayes' theorem, and we'll be looking into this in a future video. Hope this made sense of the concepts of sensitivity and specificity. So thanks for joining me today.